Hey, everybody. We talked about factoring yesterday. We talked about um, greatest common factor. We talked about um, factoring by grouping. And we talked briefly about trinomials and factoring those. Now, I want to revisit trinomials for just a second um, so that you guys can, can remember because we went really briefly over that. So we looked at, um, for example, number seven. We looked at this trinomial and we decided that we needed to know the factors of 15 that could sum to give me eight. So if I go through the factors of 15, I have one and 15, three and five, and that's about it. So the factors of 15 that will sum to give me eight, well, if I have three plus five, it gives me eight and three times five gives me 15. So that satisfies my needs in this problem. So when I factor, I would have X plus five and X plus three. Now, on number eight, it was a little different. We had to look at um, positives and negatives here. And we listed the factors of 20, which were 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 5 and 4. Well, I needed the factors of 20, whichever I, I had, to sum to give me a negative 1. That's the coefficient of this a here. So in order for, uh, for me to get a negative 1, I would have to have a positive and a negative number. And the only logical option is negative 5 and 4. Because when I multiply negative 5 and 4, it still gives me 20, but I needed a negative 20. So that satisfies that. And then negative 5 plus 4 gives me a negative 1. So keeping that in mind as we go through um, this factoring process, you're going to need to know that. So steps for solving by factoring. So you factored yesterday. You got some beautiful parentheses. You had stuff inside them. What we want to do is solve them. So what's the actual answer? What, what does this factored problem give me? So we want to set the quadratic equal to zero when we do this. We want to write the quadratic in standard form. Remember, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. And then we want to factor the quadratic. Once we have that, we're going to use that zero product property to solve. And we talked about that a long time ago. So basically, we're going to set them both equal to zero, both of those parentheses once we've factored. So let's check it out. So right now, I want to solve each of these equations by factoring. And number 16 says I have x plus 3 times x minus 5 equals zero. Well, that's already factored, so we're in good shape. So once we have this factored, what we're going to do is... We are going to take the parentheses, each factor, which is our what's inside the parentheses, and we're going to set both factors equal to zero. So we have x plus 3 equal to zero, and we have x minus 5 equal to zero. Now, remember when we talked about what quadratics look like and how um, they can have two x-intercepts because it's those x-intercepts are where that graph's crossing um, the x-axis where that parabola is crossing the x-axis, what we're actually finding here are those x-intercepts. We're finding those zeros, all right? So this is something we've already talked about. This is just the algebraic way to do it. So when I do this, this is an equation. It's a linear equation. You've been solving these. They're one-step equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides, and that'll give me negative 3. And I'm going to add 5 to both sides of the second equation. So I got negative 3 and positive 5. That's my solution set. So what this means is these are my zeros. These are my zeros or my x-intercepts for this particular quadratic function. All right. Let's check out another one. So here I have 2x squared equals 15x. Remember, first thing was I need this set equal to 0. Is it set equal to 0? No. Can I get it that way? Yes. So I can move that 15x over to the side of the 2x squared, which leaves me with 2x squared minus 15x equals 0. All right, so I now have this set equal to 0. My next question is, is it in standard form? Do I have the form of ax squared plus bx plus c? Well, I have ax squared. Here's b. There's x. Now, I don't have a c. I assume that c is 0. So here I have a binomial. When I had a binomial and I was factoring earlier, I typically factored out a GCF. So looking at these two terms in my binomial, 
what is your greatest common factor? I would say it was x because x is the only thing that goes into 2x squared and x is the only thing that goes into negative 15x. So I have x times 2x minus 15 equals 0. Well, now I'm to the point I factored it completely. So I can separate these two into two different factors and set them equal to 0. So I have x equals 0, or it could be 2x minus 15 equals 0. So from that point, one of these equations is already solved here. So all I have to do is solve 2x minus 15 equals 0. So I'm going to add 15 to both sides. And I'm going to divide by 2. So I get 15 over 2. So my solution set, where this graph is going to cross the x-axis, is going to be at where x is 0 or where x is 15 over 2, which is about 7 and a half. Okay. So I got x squared minus 36 equals 5x. Again, first thing, is it set equal to 0? No. Is it in standard form? Again, no. Let's get it that way. So I'm going to have, when I first subtract 5x from both sides, I'll have x squared minus 36 minus 5x equals 0. I can move these terms around as long as the, the, um, the sign in front stays with it. So negative 5x, it's going to go into the center because I need ax squared plus bx plus c. So my constant goes on the back end. So I took its negative 36 and I moved it to the back and took negative 5x and moved it into the middle. So now I'm in standard form. Now I can factor. Well, this is a trinomial. So I got to think, all right, what can multiply to give me negative 36? So what factors of negative 36 will multiply to give me that? But then I also want to have negative 5 when I add those numbers together. So what factors will multiply to give me negative 36 and will sum to give me negative 5? I said x minus 9 and x plus 4 because negative 9 plus 4 gives me that negative 5 and negative 9 times 4 gives me the negative 36. All right, so now you're going to move you're going you're gonna to set those two factors equal to 0. So x minus 9 equals 0 and x plus 4 equals 0. Now solve your equations. So x equals 9 and x equals negative 4. So your solution set is 9, negative 4. Or the place where this graph crosses the x-axis is where x equals 9 or where x equals negative 4. All right. It's time for you to do some practice. You got to think through these things and think about what you need to do in order to factor them completely and to solve them. Okay? So try these before we go. See what you can do with them. You want to solve these. These are set equal to zero. Okay? So solve them completely. Where do these problems, where do these functions cross the x-axis. That's what you're looking for. And these should have been your answers when you got your solution. Okay, I hope that you're ready to practice. Do your best, try your hardest, and I will see you soon.